your camera is getting in the way of you taking the very best photographs that you possibly can. There is a piece of well-intentioned, often repeated advice that says to become a better photographer, you must take as many pictures as you possibly can. I'm sorry, that advice is completely wrong. I'm indebted to Rob Moore, who wrote a title on a recent Medium article that I was reading that said, stop taking pictures and start taking photos. I think that is possibly one of the best pieces of advice that I've heard recently. It completely blows out of the water this idea that all you need to do to improve as a photographer is to really just take, you know, thousands of photographs. If you take 10,000 photographs, as the saying goes, you will be a lot better. But what if you don't take those photographs with any sort of intent, with any sort of purpose, just randomly machine gunning your way through every photo session that you have, filling up CF card after CF card with the expectation that, you know, out of those thousands of photographs, there'll be one or two that will be okay, that would be, you know, worth keeping. How is that going to make your photography that much better? When you turn up to somewhere and you get out your camera and you start taking pictures everywhere because, you know, you're excited, then you are missing opportunities. You're not connecting with the environment that you're in. You're not... You're not in the you're not in the game. Your head's not in the game, right? The next time that you go out somewhere doing street photography, right? Don't when you get off the train or off the bus or wherever you you know when you go into the city, don't just start taking pictures willy nilly, right? Have a coffee, walk around a bit, get a feel for the environment, the the ebb and the flow of of the city life around you. Landscape photographers have this easy because they often need to walk and spend some time in the environment with their photographing before they get to take pictures. So they are becoming naturally in tune with the landscape, with the, with the scene and, and listening to its voice and how it changes its moods. And portrait photographers have a similar thing where they can talk to the client. So when you go off the next time to take photographs, Put your camera back in its bag when you get there, right? Just chill, right? There will be opportunities. You're not going to miss the once in a lifetime photo, which we'll talk about in a second. You're going to be actually taking this time as a warm up to, you know, to be in tune with the place. Because that way, when you start to look around, it's going to be less frantic. You're going to be more open to the possibilities of things that you may have missed in that rush to take loads of photographs, to make the very most of, of the session that you have. Because when you start listening, and this is especially more true in, in street photography, when you listen to what's going on, when you understand the flow of the, of the, the sea of humanity around you, you are going to be so much better placed for those events that happen. Do you think all the famous street photographers, like, you know, that they just kind of, they just happened upon these events? That they are somehow luckier than us? That, you know, because they just, these things seem to happen to them all the time. No, it's because they are using all of their senses when they photograph. They are not just snapping willy-nilly. It may look like it, because they have been doing this for decades. They have been practicing and honing their skills until it becomes second nature. But we are not famous photo photographers. We are not that adept at taking these things, right? So we need to go a bit slower. We need to be a little bit more purposeful. Now, I'm not suggesting that you go like all W. Eugene Smith, that very famous photojournalist who worked for Time and Life magazine, who was, you know, well known for well, actually creating the photo essay. And he was commissioned to go to, to Pittsburgh to produce over a three week period, 100 images for an article and ended up spending on and off about three years there and, and took 21,000 photographs. So you don't need to go quite that full on into, you know, being in the environment and understanding its moods. But you do need to connect with the place that you are photographing, with the things that are in front of you. On a recent 
video, there was a guy called Tom Martin who commented that he has stopped listening to his instinct. And I think this is, this is also a good piece of advice because often our instinct about what may or may not be a good photograph can lead us astray, can take us away from you know, the, 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 the real possibilities. And we should rely more on our, our attention. What has caught our attention? Because if, if our attention has been caught by something, it often suggests that there is something more in that object that's worth exploring. So whatever catches his attention, he will photograph and then sort of see where the results come later on. So you can see how there's, there's process here. There's intent about photographing. There isn't just this kind of random snapshotty approach where it's, you know, spray and pray. Martin Park is a very famous photographer who's made a career out of photographing the ordinary, in this case often, often the British ordinary, and finding the unexpected because he is taking the time to listen to the environment, to, you know, to, to, to see the stories that sort of play out. Um, and also he's not afraid to take bad photographs. In fact, you know, like a lot of other photographers, he has given the advice that, you know, you should take bad photographs. You mustn't be worried about taking, there's nothing wrong with taking bad photographs. Because if you don't take bad photographs, how would you know if you are ever taking a, well, a good photograph? So again, you can see that spray and pray effect isn't going to help you recognize what was good because if you're just spraying and praying, how do you know how do you know how you got that photograph in the first place if it was just one of a thousand random pictures that you took that is uh, such a problem with modern photography because digital is is essentially free when we take pictures that there is a it's natural you can take loads of pictures you know i take far more pictures than i used to and what happens is you get People who are kind of new to photography or or not, you know, pushing themselves, thinking that a, a random occurrence, this is what we talked about earlier, that random thing, oh, I was so good because I got that random picture, that they think that random thing is, is enough to carry the photo, that, you know, that, that that pigeon doing a quirky thing or, you know, just floating off into the sky or the, the way something has fallen over or something is how good they are as a photographer because they caught that thing. It's, that's not the same as being a photographer who is crafting an image, who is being thoughtful and putting things together and making the best use of those random events when they happen. We cannot run until we can walk and to walk we need to be intentional about our photographs we need to take them with purpose we need to listen and be aware of our environments and make the best use of it possible Sebastião Salgado is a photographer who I feel epitomizes this this approach completely his work in the the, the mines in the Amazon rainforest is is mind blowing. It is a, it is a, a joy to behold. And yet the images, the messages they convey is anything but joyful. It is about the insignificance of man and the, the, the debasement that man will put themselves through in the chase of riches. And you don't get those kind of photographs from just turning up, taking a couple of snapshots and then just leaving. You get that because he was involved. He was, he, was, he was listening to their stories. And it goes the same in his landscape photographs. They are just, they're beautiful and sumptuous because he's allowing the subject to reach out to him, to speak its voice. And I want you to start doing that. And the best way for you to do that is to slow down, put the camera down, think about what's going on and watch. Salgado's video because he is a well the photographs I, I struggle to put them into words which is not the best advertisement for you clicking on there but go and watch it it's awesome thank you ever so much for being here and I'll see you again soon